Growing Up with Narcissistic Parents, part two. This one's gonna be on belittlement. And belittlement is making someone feel less than they are, unimportant, uh, intentionally devaluing them. And oftentimes, children experience this uh, in the home because their parents never had their needs met. They were never shown that they were loved and important or that they could get their needs met. And so how were they able to give to their children what was not given to them, right? So I share these stories to bring awareness to the intensity of living in this type of environment, of always being on the defense, the, the nervous system like repeatedly triggered, living more in a state of trigger than a state of calm. And what strength it takes to finally walk away from that and so I shared to affirm those who have similar stories and say, your story is valid, it is real, you did experience this, and you are able to shift, walk away, and experience life. It doesn't always have to be death, you, you are able to experience life. And I also share to bring awareness to those who really aren't familiar with this because it's a lonely road, first of all, growing up in that environment and not having the help that we needed. And number two, to have a collective that is largely unaware of, it's just not possible to have a relationship with an unaware narcissist who is refusing to change. And to withhold that judgment, to, to not even say something like, how could you, didn't you try this? Instead, offer something like, wow, I can imagine that that must have taken a lot of courage. I'd love to hear your story of courage sometime because that's what it is. It is a story of courage to fucking make it out of that war zone alive and not become that and transmute that and, and become what we really are, which is love. We're here to be an embodiment of love. So this first story I'm gonna share with you is um, I was, I don't know, maybe, 12, 13, 14 years old, and I'm sitting at home. My parents are fighting again. Uh, this is a regular occurrence. They yelled and screamed every single day, berated and belittled each other. Um, and when I say every day, I really mean every day. I do not have a memory of a day where my parents were not fighting. And I had my head tucked and my hands on top of my head, and finally I get up or I, I look up and I'm like, why are you guys always fighting? And without skipping a beat, my dad says, it's all because of you, you little bitch. And that's just inappropriate, right? As adults, especially as mature adults who've done our healing work, we understand that children are the mirror of the parents. So look in the mirror, buddy. If you don't like what you see, look in the mirror. And not only that, it wasn't me. Like, let's just be honest. They were miserable with themselves. They were miserable with each other and they took it out on their children. Um, my dad would regularly say things when we would come home from church. Everyone at church hates you kids. They think you're the worst kids. And for, you know, minor infractions, like it's nothing that, anyone would hate a child for, right? It's just normal kid stuff, running around, being rambunctious, maybe being a little bit too loud at times. But I'll tell you what, I had the fear of God in me and I certainly wasn't gonna back talk my dad or do something so terrible because I mean, the minor infractions got this. Could you imagine what the major infractions got? So there was a healthy fear inside of me. And so there was no reason for a dad to say that. and. Even if someone did say, I hate your kid, fuck off, right? That is not something that a parent passes on to their child. Parents are there to protect their children and safeguard their, their children from adults who are saying ignorant things, right? Because if, 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 a, if this adult had their senses about them, they would understand that, oh my goodness, this child must have a challenging upbringing if it's acting out that bad. But that wasn't the case though, right? That wasn't the case. It was just this unrealistic expectation of perfection and never understanding 
what that perfection expectation was and it was like a moving target. Um, I remember one time uh, I had bleached my jeans in the wash and they were these green, like these forest green jeans and then accidentally some bleach got in there and so there was all these pink spots on my beautiful green jeans. And so I didn't want to wear them anymore. And so I asked my dad if I could have a new pair of jeans to replace those. And my dad was so mean and, and said, you are so ungrateful. There are starving kids in Africa that don't have this and blah, 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 blah. And you know, all you deserve is food and a roof over your head. That's it and then proceeded to just give me like, uh, I think it was like five outfits for I think a month or two months, something like that. So not only belittling me for having a natural um, desire to want to fit in and not be made fun of as a kid in, in high school, but then continue with the public humiliation and make me only wear five outfits for a while, right? just shrinking, hiding, not wanting to be seen because I'm being made fun of now, right? Um, and this, you know, children are gonna be children and it is up to parents to instill in them the values that allow them to see the bigger picture in life and grow, right? So instead of my dad saying something like, you're so ungrateful and blah, 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 and starving children, and now you only get this many outfits for two months, saying something like, babe, I understand that this feels embarrassing to wear these jeans and you might get made fun of. And tell you what, let's go to a thrift store. We don't have a lot of money, but let's go to a thrift store and see if we can find a green pair of jeans to replace this. Right, like that would be at the time 50, 75 cents, but it's also teaching the value of we, money doesn't grow on trees, but also I value that you desire to fit in and not be made fun of as a freshman in high school. Or say like there really was a parent that came up and said something about us, about how we were misbehaving. Instead of using this fear of separation and shame and hatred, uh, saying something like, hey, somebody came up and said this happened. I'm curious why you did that. And do you understand what a better choice is? And also do you understand that there's going to be consequences to this? And giving something that actually teaches them how to shift their character to be something that is more in alignment, right? But narcissistic parents aren't able to do that. They're only to, able to make you feel small and worthless because that is how they feel and you cannot rise above them because that holds them into accountability. That shows them that if a child can do it, I can do it. Oh, and heaven forbid, right? So there's a lot of really deep seated trauma that's going on in, in the psyche and in the emotional body of someone who experiences narcissism. And until they are willing to acknowledge that and do something different, there is no helping, there is no reasoning, there is not going to be any life-giving relating coming from them. There is always going to be a taking energy. If this is landing with you, if you are desiring to really shift from all these patterns that you grew up with, please reach out. I've got lots of offerings to step into and a solid path of growth and maturity and stability for you. I love you and I got your back.